morning, everybody. This is Laney at Hilltop Home Place. Today, I've got a little project I'm working on. Well, I started it last night. I'm finishing it today. But I'm going to be planting the seeds for something I completely forgot about. Really, since I've been gardening, I forgot about it. <laughs> but it's come to my attention lately, and I'm going to start planting it. Here it is. It's Kakuzi. I got these seeds the other day from Nichols Garden Nursery, which is a place in Oregon, and I had mentioned it on another video not too long ago when I made an order. But I made another order uh, last week, it just came in Saturday, and because when I was looking through their catalog, sometimes I just get the catalogs out when I'm bored in the evenings, and I look, and I realized they had Kakuzi. Well, cross-reference that with another reminder that I had of it the other day. I was going through a town that's kind of near me, and this town has a really big Sicilian population. And they had a sign, they have actually an Italian heritage museum in this town. And I went through the town and they had a sign out by the road that said, plant your Kakuza now. <laughs> you can call it Kakuzi or Kakuza, it's the same thing. My seed company calls it Kakuzi, but locals call it Kakuza, doesn't really matter. Now, I've never grown them before, but I know about them. They're very popular to grow here in South Louisiana. In this particular area I live in, there's a big Sicilian population, as I said, so they grow them a lot. But when I used to live even closer to Baton Rouge and everything, a lot of people there grew them too. As a matter of fact, I used to work with a girl and they were going through some severe money situations. Her husband's business was kind of being going out of, going under, I guess you would say. And their money got really, really tight. And I remember she was just trying to, to figure out how to feed her family and stretch her money like crazy when her dad said, oh, well, my kakuzas are coming in. You can have all the kakuzas you want off of my plant. And she was extremely, extremely grateful to get those kakuzas. Now they are a member of the gourd family, just like all zucchini and squash are. But a lot of people around here call them kakuza squash. And if you harvest them young, you can eat them just like squash. When you harvest them when they're shorter, you can let them grow long and they will get like three foot long or even longer. You can let them grow long and as they grow, 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 their rind hardens. And when they get to their full maturity or even past maturity, they can get hard like a gourd. A lot of people uh, in years past would hollow them out and use them for different things, decorations. I guess maybe you could try to use them for birdhouses or something, I don't know, but like for smoking pipes, just all the things that people can get creative and make things out of with these gourds, especially a long slender gourd, or it could be a curly gourd. And here's how it gets to be curly. If you don't trellis it and you don't let the gourds hang down, the squash, if you don't let them hang straight down, they will curl up like a snake. And that's one of the nicknames that this squash has with Sicilian people is it's called the snake of Sicily. Because if you do plant the seed, you don't trellis it, you let them grow on the ground, they curl up like a snake. You can still eat them just fine like that, but it's just, I think it would probably be easier to trellis them and let them grow long and straight. When you get in the kitchen and you're dealing with zucchinis and squash, sometimes it's just easier to deal with them straight than it is all curled up. But the Sicilian nicknames for these are the Cacuza Longo, which actually just means long zucchini. And that's what they are. They're, they're like a zucchini. You can cook them and eat them when you harvest them young. You can cook them and eat them like a zucchini squash or like a regular squash but they will grow long. And um, the other day, I don't know how many of you that watched me also watched the Holler Homestead. They actually, when they did their video the other day, they were talking about uh, putting up their trellising for their Kakuza squash. Man, <laughs> after I watched what all they did and they, and I mean, they're doing it according to what they need, but I was like, man, I don't know if I have enough trellising supplies around here for that. So I actually went and bought me some more T-posts. But what he did was he actually had probably 10, 12 foot tall uh, posts like this with a post across the top of it. And they had three of them, kind of like telephone poles going down their row. And then he was gonna hook cattle panels to the top part of it. And they're gonna let their kakuzi just grow over this whole archway over it and let the squash hang down the sides because you gotta think of the reason you're growing them and what you wanna do, and that'll kinda of determine how you trellis things and stuff like that. 
what their objective is, is to let them get overripe, to let them get past that point of eating. I'm sure they'll eat some of them, but they want the majority of them to get past that point of where you would bring them in the house and eat them for supper and grow and grow and grow. And they're going to use them as food for their pigs and other animals and things like that. A lot of times they do grow Cherokee tank pumpkins. And uh, last year, I think they grew a lot of Kushaw green stripe squash to feed their animals and the kakuzi last year and then this year they're going to grow the kakuzi again and that's one thing about the kakuzi and i'm hoping it's true because i sure don't want to waste this space for something that doesn't grow but one thing about it is they are supposed to be voracious growers when you plant the seeds they are supposed to take off their vines can get up to 25 feet long but most of the time they stay around 10 to 16 feet long it says but they take off in no time and start growing. And the whole growth cycle can be around 65 days. I'm not sure if that counts to letting it get really over long so that you can use it like a gourd, but for sure you can have fruit to eat within 65 days, which actually makes this plant, even though it kind of does better in heat, it likes heat, it does good in tropical type areas like South Louisiana, even though it does uh, like those areas the best, because it grows so quickly and so fervently, it can be grown even up to zones like two. You may have to uh, just evaluate your zone. Some people just have very, very short growing seasons, which is I just out of my brain. I can't really think about that. Our growing season is probably 200 something days. Uh, a lot more than 200 days probably. And then some people's growing seasons are, are 85 days. If your growing season is strictly 85 days, you may want to start these inside, but be really careful transplanting them out. They really would rather be direct sown. So as soon as you can, as soon as your ground could be worked, and as soon as your soil starts warming up a little bit, I wouldn't plant them when your soil's still cold, but as soon as your soil starts warming up a little bit, stick the seeds in the ground. I'm going to show you the seeds real quick. As I said, these are in the gourd family, but all squash and zucchini are. But when you let kakuzas get overripe to save the seeds, like you would a regular squash or zucchini, you're not getting the regular seed like a squash or zucchini. You're getting more of a gourd seed. Can you see that really good? Is it focusing? These seeds look a lot more like gourd seeds. <laughs> or look exactly like gourd seeds than they do a squash or zucchini. So that tells you uh, in the beginning, their seeds are small, kind of like squash and zucchini, but you need to eat it if you're gonna eat it fresh and use it in, in recipes, eat it then. Once the seeds get bigger like this, they're not as edible and then your fruit doesn't taste near as good. And when you do go to cook them, you can use them the same way you use squash or zucchini. You can just split them open and bake them, put some basil and tomatoes on them and some cheese and just bake them. Or you can chop them up and stir fry them with onions and things like that. It, that sounds delicious. Or you can put them in pasta recipes. And there's even something that they make out of these it's called kukazada, which is actually a jam. So you would sweeten that up and make it like a jam. Google recipes for cuckoos on the internet. I'm sure you'll find plenty of them. Let me go out here and show you what I did and how I'm getting ready for the invasion of these kakuzas. <laughs> As you're coming down my driveway, I had my dirt pile right there. That's where I had them dump the dirt when they brought it. And it served me well because it's been kind of centrally located and it's been easy to move that dirt to all my different beds. But I don't want a dirt pile permanently there forever. <laughs> but what I might get is some type of kakuza bed or something there permanently forever. But here's what I did. I went yesterday and bought me some more tea posts. I have one, two, three six foot ones. And they're actually kind of, you can't tell it from here, but they, they're shaped in a V. That, that one's to the back, this one's to the middle, and that one's to the back. And on those three posts that are in the back, that's where I'm gonna put some wire. I think I better go with wire and not just string for these kakuzas since they kind of can get heavy because I am going to let some of them overgrow so that I can save seeds, but they get kind of heavy. So I just don't think, and they get very viney. So I think I need some wire for support, but I'm going to put wire on there and I'm going to let my kakuzas grow up those trellises, hang over, do whatever they want, and hopefully have a lot of them. 
and that's what I'm going to do to the back. What I did was, sometimes my brain just works different ways, but what I did was, is I made a little bed here. This is only a five foot pole, it's shorter, but I'm going to also put some string uh, weaving all up there. And I need more space for tomatoes. So on either side of that string, I'm going to plant at least three tomatoes. So that'll give me room for six tomatoes, just kind of borrowing one of those T-posts from the Kakuza squash, bringing it out a little bit and making me some tomato beds. Y'all, I just wanted to give y'all this information and show you this today to show you that there are options out there for food that is prolific vigorous, fast growing, and that will taste good and put food on your table that you can use in a multiplicity of ways. I forgot to even mention that people make soup with kakuza all the time. It's definitely good in soups. So here's just some options. Here's some different ways. And try the seeds from Nichols Garden Nursery uh, or try to source them locally, but they are a little hard to find. And apparently there's Kakuza Day on August 12th. <laughs> Save the date. If you haven't grown Kakuza before, at least look into them and give them a try. Thank y'all so much. Bye-bye.